So let's start by recalling our two ways now of writing the gamma function. Uh, we know that gamma of z, the first way we saw it was as this integral right here, integral 0 to infinity x to the z minus 1 e to the minus x dx. That was, that was the first way we were introduced to the gamma function because we saw that this satisfied the recurrence property of the gamma function. Uh, we also saw in the previous video that there was another way of writing the gamma function. There was another way of writing it uh, in terms of an infinite product. And there we saw that gamma of z was equal to 1 over z, product n equals 1 to infinity, 1 plus 1 over n to the z, divided by 1 plus z over n. Okay, uh, so so last time we, we, we derived this, um, but what we didn't see was that uh, these two expressions here are actually equal. I mean, so so just looking at this, it's not obvious that for, for every value of z, these two are going to be the same. Um, so that's what I want to do in this video. I want to, I want to create an argument uh, to sort of convince you that these two are actually the same. And I'm going to do that um, in two parts. The first thing I'm going to do is to um, recall that this product definition of the gamma function right here we got uh, from this limit definition. We said initially that this was equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of uh, one, uh, 1 times 2 times 3 all the way up to n uh, divided by 1 plus z times 2 plus z all the way up to n plus z times, and then we multiplied this by 2 over 1 times 3 over 2 all the way up to n plus 1 over n, whole thing raised to the z. Uh, so this is, this is how we initially got to the uh, product form of the gamma function last time. We had this, this limit right here, and then we noticed that this was actually something that was uh, equal to this infinite product up here. Okay? Um, so what I'm going to do is to show that uh, this gamma function can be rewritten in a form such that it's exactly the same as this limit right here. And here's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to define a new function, uh, which I will call the partial gamma function, or, or which is called the partial gamma function, gamma sub m of z. And I'm going to uh, define it like this. It's going to be the integral from 0 to m of x to the z minus 1 times 1 minus x over m to the m dx. And hopefully this is ringing some bells right here because uh, this term right here what, that we've effectively substituted in for e to the minus x uh, is what you see in the limit definition for Euler's number. You know, if, if we had this guy right here outside of an integral, you would say that in the limit as m goes to infinity, this is exactly e to the minus x. And so, and so you can you can easily imagine how uh, in the limit where m goes to infinity, this integral right here is exactly the same as this gamma function right here. Um, but uh, what I want to do is just you know look at this look at this partial gamma function and see if we can evaluate this integral and then see what we get from that. Uh, so how how do we want to go about solving this integral? Um, well, one thing I'm noting is that we have we have something that looks like x times one minus x. You know, loosely speaking. And whenever I see an x and a 1 minus x, I think about the beta function. And so if we could make this thing look like a beta function, uh, then maybe we, could, maybe we could get an exact solution to this integral right here and do something interesting with it. Uh, and so what I'm going to do is uh, a change of variables. I'm going to say let's let x over m equal t. And so dx is equal to m dt. And if we do that, then what do we get? Uh, we get that our partial gamma function is equal to uh, well, um, let's look at our bounds of integration. We're going from x equals uh, 0 to m, so our bounds of integration become 0 to 1. That's good for our beta function. Uh, we have x to the z minus 1. That's going to be mt to the z minus 1. And then we have 1 minus t raised to the m uh, times m dt. Okay, we can simplify this a little bit. And if we do, then what we get is what? We can pull out an m to the z minus 1 times m. So we have an m to the z out in front, integral 0 to 1. And then t to the z minus 1, 1 minus t to the m dt. And this right here is exactly our beta function. And in fact, it is, uh, it is beta, beta of m plus 1 comma z. 
and we can rewrite this. Um, and, and, and now that we know this is in terms of the beta function, that means that we can rewrite it in terms of the gamma function. Uh, and if we write this in terms of the gamma function, then what this is equal to is m to the z gamma of m plus 1 gamma of z divided by gamma of m plus z plus 1. Okay. Uh, so this is good. Um, we have we, we, we've effectively uh, simplified our, our integral for this partial gamma function into just this expression involving gamma functions. Um, but let, let's notice what happens when we simplify this. So if we if we try and simplify this a little bit, uh, what happens? Well, a gamma of m plus 1, that's the definition of m factorial. m factorial. We still have this m to the z. And then what else do we have here? Well, we have gamma of z divided by gamma of m plus z plus 1. And so that's like z minus 1 factorial uh, divided by m plus z factorial. And let's notice that uh, when we, we, we can actually simplify this, this ratio of factorial functions, right? Because we can use the, the recurrence property on this, uh, this, this one down here. Um, and what this becomes is m factorial m to the z uh, divided by, what are we going to be left with? We're going to be left with, um, going to be left with z times 1 plus z times 2 plus z all the way up to m plus z. Okay. Um, and I noticed there's a typo up here. There should also be a 1 over z right here. 1 over z because we get the 1 over z from this gamma function. Um, okay. Uh, so we have this. Now let's let's take a second and notice something. So we, we've kind of argued from the beginning that if we take the limit as m goes to infinity of this guy right here, we're going to get this gamma function, right? Just because we've sort of substituted in the, the limit definition of e. Um, but notice that this right here and the limit as m goes to infinity is exactly the same as this limit right here, right? So let's let's take a second to look at this. Um, so so how is this the same? Well, um, in the limit in the limit where with m going to infinity, so so let's write that limit m going to infinity. Uh, are these two the same? Well, we have z one plus z two plus z all the way up to m plus z in the denominator. You know, so that that's the same right here, except we're, we're using m. Um, we have n factorial up here. We have m factorial right here. Those are the same. Uh, the only thing left is this m to the z in this in this this term right here. But recall that uh, this term right here, this term right here is just n plus one to the z. We sort of artificially expanded it in order to make it this much longer. Um, but really, this is just one times one times one times one, all the way up to n plus one to the z. But in the limit where n is going to infinity, uh, this is the same. This is the same as n to the z. And so because of that, uh, we see that these two limits right here are exactly the same. Uh, and because of that, uh, we see that our gamma function is in fact equivalent in both its integral form to this product definition right here. And so that's really cool. By, by looking at some partial gamma function that we, that, we, that we sort of invented by looking at the limit definition of e, uh, we were able to show that uh, in the limit as m goes to infinity, uh, that's exactly the same as the product definition of the gamma function. Uh, and so that's super cool. Uh, so I, th I think I'll stop here. I mean, so 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 what, what I've done in this video isn't rigorous. If you wanted to really rigorously prove that this is true, you know, you'd have to do something like gamma of z minus partial gamma of z and show that in the limit I'm going to infinity, it's equal to zero. And so what I have done here isn't rigorous, but it's, it's easy to, you know, see intuitively why this works. Why just by substituting in you know the limit definition of e, uh, this is going to work out. Uh, so I think I'll stop here. In in the next few videos, I'll start looking at a different product uh, definition of the gamma function, which actually ends up being a bit more useful than this Euler definition that we've seen so far. So so the new definition I'm going to introduce uh, is equivalent to these two definitions right here, but it's written a little nicer than this, and because of that, it's a bit more useful. Uh, so I hope to see you in those videos.